Okay, so I originally planned this free animes video to happen around this time because of Beastars Season 3, but then I didn't work on it, and then I got sick, so, uh, have this instead. Beastars is really cool, its third season is also really cool, and its opening is even better. There's nothing else to say, so let's just get started going over every detail in the opening for the Beastars Final Season Part 1. God, what a name. I shouldn't have to say this, but I know someone is going to yell at me in the comments if I don't, but spoiler warning for a series that ended four years ago. First off, it's a return to form for Beastars, going back to a stop motion aesthetic that the first opening Wildside used. Although, while that one used traditional stop motion models, this third OP, Into the World, uses a paper puppet aesthetic. Just like the name of the song implies, the greater city is the big focus of it, opening not with Legosi or even the name of the anime, but nameless background characters. I'm not sure if they are just true randos or actually referencing some of the fodder in the episodes, but I'm not sifting through all of them to check. Of course, now we get the opening and our first look at our main boy, who's left his school behind and in the world he finds himself getting lost in the thrilling vibes. The animation here looks really good, and the scene changes as we see Legosi trip and fall. Oh, and fun fact that I just learned and really want to share that's like kinda sorta maybe relevant to what we just saw, but did you know that the reason canvas sneakers have felt on the bottom is so that they're legally known as slippers instead of sneakers when being imported? It's true, look it up. Next up is the shot of the main love interest, Louis, I mean Haru, in his best kinda sorta maybe, it's really complicated friend Louie. There ain't much here to be honest, just a small scene to show off important characters while keeping in touch with a nice paper aesthetic. I did try to translate these words here, but I couldn't find anything, which makes me sad. Legoshi gets up and is shocked when he sees a car driven by two members of the Shishigumi, Miguel and Free. Yeah, bet you forgot this guy's name, didn't ya? Not me though, I remembered. I'm just kidding, I had looked that up too. What's interesting here is actually the framing of the scene. At first, it's a Legoshi running towards the camera, away from the car, i.e. away from the Shishigumi. But this is then flipped on its head, with the car driving away from the camera and Legoshi running towards it. Why is that? Could it have something to do with the melon leaves growing to the side? Well, obviously, yeah. Not only does this hint towards the fact that in the latter half of the season, Legoshi will end up going after Melon, but this is also not so subtle foreshadowing of the fact that Melon is the new boss of the Shishigumi, who Legoshi is at first running from and then unintentionally running to. An idea that's made more prevalent with the next shot, which is a retread of a similar shot from the first OP. However, this time it goes from a forest of a deer's antlers to a forest of a gazelle's horns. Metaphorically, Legoshi is going from Cherryton Academy, where Louis dominates, to the greater city, where Melon is the main source of conflict. And this is followed by a first shot of the B-star Yaya, and Legoshi looking understandably horrified. Does it have something to do with his carrots? Probably. Honestly, Yaya is one of the more interesting characters introduced in the final season. He's like an extreme version of Legoshi. Both Yaya and Legoshi have this weird habit of trying to solve all the world's problems on their own, and even Yaya's carnivore carrots are like a twisted version of Legoshi eating Louis' leg. The real difference between them is in that Legoshi doesn't embrace perceived perfection, finding value in things that are seemingly flawed. Hell, even Yaya's whole spiel about perfect people creating the examples for a perfect society is just hypocrisy on his part. Seeing as how Yaya is a very flawed person, so this society he's creating is equally flawed, and Legoshi's strength being his supposed imperfections, such as his love for Haru, his bond with Louis, and his seemingly insane belief in a better future. It's like that small bit with the melon in episode 8. Just like how it doesn't matter if melon is a fruit or vegetable, the shades of grey are perfectly fine, you take the good with the bad. Actually, taking it a step further, it's more like Gosha was right and Legoshi is proof of that. Gosha chooses not to become a B-star, embracing his feelings for a grey wolf. Though, Gosha lacked the courage needed, admitting he never had the guts to confront the subject with his daughter, and that's where Legoshi succeeds. When confronted with the potential horror of a carnivore-herbivore mix in Melon, he doesn't run, and instead actively seeks him out. Wait, I am so sorry, I got so sidetracked. This is supposed to be talking about the opening, That's this is genuinely my bad. As I should have been saying, next up are a series of shots of important characters from across the season. A cool little detail you would have noticed if you didn't and skip the OP like a heathen is that the silhouettes get filled in as we meet each character. Bleach actually does something similar with its OP and ED. I don't know where this trend started, but I am loving it. Although I've got to ask, am I the only one who half expected Sagwan to be naked when his silhouette got revealed? I, I don't know why, but I did. 
Like, is that weird? And then the OP pretty much wraps up where it started, Legoshi falling through the world, emblematic of the confusing chaos before finding comfort in those he cares about, finally waking up in the Beast Apartments. All in all, that's a pretty good opening. The stop motion animation was honestly something I missed a lot from the first season, so I'm ecstatic that it's made a return. The anime itself also made some changes to the structure of this final arc, which I have some thoughts on, so maybe I'll make a larger video about that later. You will get the regularly scheduled video this Sunday, so don't worry, this was just a bonus thing I wanted to make. That being said, a bonus video is still a video, so it's time for our Patreon shoutouts. For our three stars, we have special thanks to Choron, SkyKing64, Eddie Sanwero, Garen Faze, Zora Chow, Venomous, Rileboon378, and Jay Stassi. For four stars, we have Miki Moon, McCoyities, and Otterly All, peeling back the layers. And for our Super D Duper special five star shoutouts, we have first, The Good Old Days, The Old Dragon's Wrath, followed by Hodari Lion, The Tragedy of the Waves. Thank you for watching. Do be sure to like and subscribe. As always, this is Joe's Fury signing out.